right, welcome back everyone. Uh, so let's talk about equations. And an equation is a statement that shows that two things are equal. And we can use counters to show this addition equation. So we can write 5 plus 3 equals 8. And so here uh, I have some counters showing the 5 plus 3 equals 8. And yeah, this looks familiar. We can use counters to show a subtraction equation. For example, we can write 10 minus 4 equals 6. And so I had 10 counters there. Uh, I took away 4 and I'm left with 6. So let's say that um, Jimmy and Joey collect rocks, and Jimmy has 12 rocks. Together they have a total of 32 rocks. And we're gonna write an equation to represent how many rocks Joey has, because we don't know. It just says Jimmy and Joey collect rocks. We know that Jimmy has 12. Then again, we know that together they have a total of 32 rocks. So we're gonna use a symbol to represent the number of rocks that Joey has. And I thought maybe we could use a square. Uh, let's use a square to represent the number of rocks that Joey has. So, some things that we know. We know that Joey's rocks plus Jimmy's rocks equals 32 rocks. Uh, we know that Jimmy has 12 rocks. So, we can write this equation. Square plus 12 equals 32. And remember, the square is representing Joey and his rocks. And, I mean, we could use any symbol. Um, that we could use, you could draw a rock, I guess. You could say plus 12 equals 32. That is, that's acceptable. Um, but just using some kind of symbol uh, to represent Joey. And so, there's three possible ways that we could use to solve this equation. So we could use counters. And so I've divided Jimmy's rocks from Joey's rocks. And remember, we have 32 total. And so I have 32 counters. And we know that Jimmy has 12 rocks. So let's put 12 rocks over here for Jimmy. I think that's nine. And so that means uh, the rest of these should move over here. Um, I don't put all the room I wanted. Let's do this. Oops. Okay, something like that. Okay. So, how many rocks does Joey have? Well, I can count. I, uh, or we can do some mul uh, multiplication. We have one, two, three, four times one, two, three, four, five. Uh, or another way is five columns of four, four times five, or if we count them all up, is 20 rocks. And we can double check our work here. Does 12 plus 20 equal 32? Uh, I think it does. So this is a way we could use. We just put what we know into one section and whatsoever, whatever's remaining is what um, Joey had. Okay, here's another possible way we could solve this. We have uh, 32 squares sitting here. Um, there's 32 rocks. Maybe each square could represent a rock. And so I'm just going to draw a picture of Jimmy's rocks. He had 12. Um, so that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so whatever is left is got to be Joey's rocks. And so I'm going to draw out Joey's rocks. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, little rock, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that means that Joey has 20 rocks. So we drew it out this time. All right, a third possible way you could use to solve this is guessing and checking. And so what we're going to end up doing is instead of the square we came up with earlier, we're going to substitute numbers to put in there. So let's try 10 first. So I'm going to substitute. Um, so showing my work, I could do this. Square plus 12 equals 32. And I'm going to put in 10 and see if it works. Does 10 plus 12 equal 32? It does not. Uh, 10 plus 12 actually equals 22, which is much too low. So let's go a little bit higher. Let's try 15. I'm putting 15 where the square used to be. Okay. 15 plus 12 equals 27. Again, that's too low. Um, I'm a bit low. Let's go up another 5. 20 
plus 12. I'm substituting the 20 for the square. Ah, that does equal 32. So you could try different um, numbers and see if they do work out. That is an option. Right, I'm going to get you to try one. Uh, Cheryl. Good old Cheryl has a hole in her pocket. Oh, no. She started with 80 cents in her pocket on the way home. 25 cents fell out. Now, we don't know how many what coins she had. It could be dimes and nickels or it could be just a quarter. Um, but 25 cents fell out. Uh, we're going to use guess and check. How much money did Cheryl have in her pocket when she got home? So the first step that I want you to do is write an uh, equation using a symbol. Okay? They write an equation using a symbol. Remember, any symbol will do. And then we'll find out the right answer. We're going to use guess and check. So I'm going to get you to pause here. I want you to try it out and see if you get the answer that I got. All right, I'm going to start with 80 cents. We know that. And so all the money together, the money she lost and the money that she had in her pocket uh, when she got home uh, equals 80 cents. And so I do know that um, she had 25 cents at one point, but she lost it. I'm going to use the symbol of a circle. And the reason I use a circle is I thought, well, that looks like a coin. So the coins, and that's, um, that's referring to the money she had when she got home, plus the 25 cents she lost equals the 80 cents. So something plus 25 equals 80. So we're going to use this guess and check. Well, um, how about 40 cents? Does 40 plus 25 equal 80? Uh, it does not. It equals 65. So we're too low. So maybe I'll go a little bit higher. How about 50? Does 50 plus 25 equal 80? Uh, 50 plus 25 does not equal 80. It equals 75. So we're getting very close. So probably we should add five more cents. 55 plus 25. That is supposed to be a five does equal 80 cents. So the amount of money she had when she got home was 55 cents. Now this is a word problem. We should end, end it with a sentence. Cheryl had 55 cents when she got home. All right, folks, there you have it. We're using um, symbols to represent things we don't know with equations. Remember, equations show things that are equal, and we know they're equations when they have that symbol. Okay, so here we've had a couple of real life situations. So please remember, in life, math happens. Take care.